this is a very large waterfront that we're attempting to, to cover. Interesting new drugs, impressive research, recommendations that we change therapy for people that are on previous therapy. We can do better for them, all right? Now, we find a patient with acute heart failure, and I guess this would be reduced ejection fraction heart failure. What is a typical workup by a primary care physician or you guys for somebody with acute heart failure? Where do we start? I think the first question is where are you? So many of the uh, circumstances were either in or out of the hospital, and I think there's a slightly different pathway for patients who present sick acutely in the hospital. But for the most part, what we're trying to do is figure out, well, what, why now? So what precipitated the heart failure? And if it's low ejection fraction heart failure, one question is, um, how did you get there? And then we walk through the differential diagnosis that Scott gave us at the top, which is, is there coronary artery disease, since that is a, a critical cause? Is there uncontrolled hypertension? Does the patient have other risk factors? Is there a family history? So once we walk through the etiologies, then we can kind of decide, well, what's likely in this patient, and then begin the diagnostic workup. I think once you've made the diagnosis, then we need to think through the therapy. So if you've established the diagnosis of acute heart failure, does it matter how you got there? Do, do, the, do the drugs that you prescribe, the therapy you're going to initiate, does that really depend upon the etiology of the heart failure once the heart failure is established? Well, yes and no. I mean, it, as, as we've alluded to, if you find out that a patient has heart failure because of coronary disease, then the first thing you want to do is treat the coronary disease. So you want to make sure that the patient is uh, properly revascularized. Uh, you don't want active ischemia in, in, a, in a patient with heart failure. If it's valvular disease, for example, um, you want to address those issues potentially. But um, one of the things about heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is that there is a final common pathway that tends to respond, uh, no matter what the etiology, to this pretty much the same therapies, with maybe the exception of CRT, which is useful particularly in patients with um, uh, left bundle branch block, wide QRS, CRT electrical is disease. Cardiac resynchronization therapy. Okay. Yes. Biventricular pacing. Biventricular, Biventricular pacing. pacing. Um, but again, that, that's almost a, a mechanical answer. You're going to go in there with electrodes and, and pacing. In terms of pharmacology, with the exception of the resynchronizing patients, um, once, you've, once you've gotten at the, the etiology in the sense that you'd rather not have wide open MR or really tight AS, uh, you'd rather not have a 90% occlusion of the LAD. These are bad things, you want to fix them. You're still left with a patient with heart failure. Yeah. Now at that point, are all comers the same? Well, initially when you're acutely presenting, you're going to present the same way, whether you have half puff or half ref. And you want to treat accordingly, according to the acute presentation. But once the patient stabilizes, that's when things really change dramatically. And so, you know, the half breath strategy um, completely changes. You put them on all those chronic heart failure medications that we had talked about earlier. Okay. And again, half pef for the and for the, the non the non half expert doctors out there who all have to treat half in heart failure. Half pef is preserved ejection fraction and REF is reduced ejection. And, and it's really important to make this distinction um, because as Cheryl mentioned, when patients present with acute decompensated heart failure, we treat them uh, in many ways the same. We, we essentially use diuretics right. um, uh, acutely. Um, we don't have very good therapies, unfortunately, for, for acute decompensated heart failure. Um, there is no magic bullet yet that we have for this disorder. But once you do stabilize a patient and you figure out if they're in this under 40 or over 40 ejection fraction category, um, we have a lot of options for the under 40 patients. For over 40, we're unfortunately in a much uh, tighter place because there is no evidence-based therapy as of yet. But, but I think that, you know, to the initial question, there essentially then the workup for almost all patients because of these issues has to begin with a, a clinical exam, uh, history, an echocardiogram, and in most cases, some assessment for coronary disease in patients at risk. I mean, would there be any time you wouldn't look for coronary disease? I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, in a 20-year-old or a, a, a young patient with, who's not doesn't really have risk factors for okay. coronary artery disease, then the differential is weighted towards familial causes or congenital causes right. or valvular causes, and in those populations, we don't necessarily suspect. 
uh, coronary disease quite frankly. And again, these are inpatients. These are folks who've, who, if you will, caught heart failure and they got sick and they're in the hospital and you're working them up. So you're going to go through the etiology, then you're going to go through, as if I hear you correctly, the physiology that presents to you, whether it's PEF or REF, and then whether it's above or below 40%, 40% being kind of a magic number, and then you're going to have to decide what to do about it, right? 